hadrons. The name comes from the Greek hadros, meaning thick or bulky. They are the particles that experience the strong force and the weak force, though leptons also experience the weak force. They're made up of combinations of quarks. There are two types of hadrons, baryons and mesons. First to look at the baryons. These consist of three quarks. The proton is the only stable baryon. All the others, including free neutrons, will eventually decay into a proton. The neutrons inside a nucleus are stable. This table summarizes the properties of charge and baryon number for the six quarks. The charge is given as a multiple of the magnitude of the charge on the electron of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The antiquarks simply have the opposite charge and baryon number to their quark counterpart. So for example the anti-down quark has a charge of plus one third, a baryon number of minus one third. Just to look at a few examples of baryons. First the proton which consists of two up and one down quark. The charge will be plus two thirds for the first up quark, plus two thirds for the second up quark, minus a third for the down quark, giving a total charge as expected for the proton of plus one. Baryon number is simply one third plus one third plus one third, giving a baryon number of one. The neutron consists of two down and an up quark. So the charge will be minus a third, minus a third, plus two thirds, giving the familiar charge of zero for the neutron. Baryon number again is one third plus one third plus one third, giving a baryon number of one. The antiproton is the same as the proton but with each quark replaced by the antiquark so it's an anti-up, anti-up, anti-down. This gives a charge of minus two-thirds, minus two-thirds, plus one-third or a charge of minus one, the opposite charge to the proton. Baryon number minus a third, minus a third, minus a third giving a baryon number of minus one. As you might expect, all baryons have a baryon number of plus one, antibaryons having a baryon number of minus one. Now to look at mesons. Mesons consist of a quark-antiquark pair. Here again is the table of charge and baryon number for quarks for us to refer to. Now to look at a few mesons. First, the pi minus one of the pions. This consists of a down anti up pair, and so the charge is minus a third for the down, minus two thirds for the anti up, giving an overall charge of minus one, hence the superscript of a minus sign. Baryon number plus one third for the down minus one-third for the anti-up, giving a baryon number of zero, the same as all mesons. The k naught or anti-k naught here, one of the kaons, consists of a strange anti-down quark. Charge is minus a third for the strange, plus one-third for the anti-down, giving an overall charge of naught, hence the zero superscript, and a baryon number of plus one third minus a third naught, like all mesons. Conservation rules. Charge, baryon number, and lepton number are conserved in all interactions. If any one of these is not conserved, the event is not possible, 
and is not seen. First to look at the familiar case of beta minus decay in which a neutron becomes a proton plus a beta minus particle or electron plus an electron anti neutrino. Well the charge the neutron has a charge of zero the proton a charge of plus one the beta minus a charge of minus one and the electron anti neutrino zero charge and naught does equal plus one minus one plus naught so that is OK. Baryon number well the neutron has a baryon number of one the proton a baryon number of one the beta minus and the electron anti neutrino both have zero baryon number and so that is OK. Lepton number well the neutron has zero lepton number as does the proton the beta minus has a lepton number of plus one it is a lepton the electron anti neutrino has a lepton number of minus one it is an anti lepton and naught is equal to naught plus one minus one so that is okay it has to be okay beta minus decay occurs In beta minus decay, a down quark changes flavor to become an up quark. So we go from down, down, up of the neutron to up, up, down of the proton. This is a weak interaction involving the weak force. Now to look at a few other interactions. In this case, a pi minus one of the pions plus a proton becomes a pi naught another pion plus a neutron just to check this obeys the conservation laws for charge the pi minus has a charge of minus one the proton a charge of plus one the pi naught zero charge and the neutron zero charge so this is zero on either side which is OK. Baryon number well the pi minus has zero baryon number the proton a baryon number of one the pi naught a baryon number of naught and the neutron a baryon number of one so this is one on both sides which is OK lepton number well in this case everything on either side has zero lepton number there are no leptons involved here so that also is okay so this interaction is allowable by the conservation rules and is seen in this example a proton becomes a pi plus plus a gamma ray in terms of charge, the proton has a charge of plus one, the pi plus a charge of plus one, the gamma ray is neutral. So in terms of charge conservation, this is OK. Baryon number. Proton has a baryon number of plus one, the pi plus zero baryon number, the gamma ray zero baryon number. So this does not balance, it is not OK, meaning we break the conservation laws, this interaction cannot occur. Lepton number, well again all these are not leptons and so in terms of lepton number this is OK. However breaking one conservation law means the interaction is not possible. In this case, a proton becomes an anti electron or a positron plus a pi naught. Charge The proton has a charge of plus one, the positron a charge of plus one, and the pi naught is neutral. 
so this is OK. Baryon number. The proton has a baryon number of 1, the positron and the pi naught both have 0 baryon number, so this violates the conservation of baryon number. It is not OK, the interaction is not seen. Lepton number, well now we have the proton with zero lepton number. A positron is an anti-lepton and so has a lepton number of minus one and the pi naught has zero lepton number. So this also violates the conservation of lepton number and is not OK. Now to look at another property, that of strangeness. Some interactions which appeared possible according to the laws of conservation of charge, baryon number and lepton number were never actually observed to occur. This led to the discovery of another conserved property which became called strangeness due to the strange behaviour of some particles. The strange quark has a strangeness of minus one while the anti-strange quark has a strangeness of plus one. All other quarks have zero strangeness. Hadrons experience the strong and weak force. Strangeness is conserved in strong interactions but not in weak interactions. Weak interactions involve a change of quark flavour such as when a strange quark decays into an up quark. In this interaction, a pi plus or pi on plus plus a neutron becomes a lambda naught and a k on plus or k plus. Looking at charge, the pi plus has a charge of plus one, the neutron is neutral, the lambda naught is neutral, and the k plus has a charge of plus one. So, in terms of charge conservation, that's OK. Baryon number. The pi plus has zero baryon number. The neutron, baryon number of plus one. The lambda naught, a baryon number of plus one. And the k plus has zero baryon number. So, in terms of conservation of baryon number, that is OK. Lepton number. Well, none of these are leptons, so that is OK. And finally, strangeness. The pi plus has zero strangeness, as does the neutron. The lambda naught has a strangeness of minus one. It contains a strange quark. The k plus has a strangeness of plus one. It contains an anti-strange quark. So, we have conservation of strangeness and the interaction is therefore OK. In any questions, you will be given the charge, baryon number, lepton number and strangeness of any particles involved. You won't be expected to remember these details, however you will be expected to be able to work out whether the interaction is possible by laying out what the charge baryon number, lepton number and strangeness of the interaction is to decide whether or not it can happen.